Hello there geographers and welcome back to another topic review video on the Mr. Sin channel. Today in this video we're going to be explaining how population distribution and density affect a society and the environment. Remember if you find value in these videos consider subscribing and if you need more help with your AP Human Geography class check out my ultimate review packet and other awesome resources in the description down below. As countries, cities, and regions see their populations fluctuate they're faced with different political, economic, social, and environmental challenges. Challenges. Remember, when we are talking about population density, we're talking about the number of people living in a specific geographic area. And when we are talking about population distribution, we are talking about the spread of people in a geographic area. Depending on the density and the distribution of a population, we can see different opportunities and challenges for a society. Politically, we can see societies that have an uneven population distribution will see political power reside in larger urban areas. Residents living in smaller communities or rural areas may have less political power and also representation as politicians may favor larger cities with larger voting bases. This could create conflict between rural communities and urban communities or lead to people in certain communities to become disenfranchised in the political process. But at the same time we can see that individuals living in large urban populations see their individual political power shrink as the population density of an area increases. For example if we look at the presidential elections in the United States. We can see that citizens who live in states with a lower population have more of an impact on their state's electoral votes compared to states with a larger population where citizens' votes have less of an impact on the outcome. A society's distribution and density can also impact what needs a society has from a government. If a society is dispersed, the government will have to provide more services over larger geographic areas such as public utilities which could increase government spending. Whereas if a population is clustered together and has a higher population density, the government may not have to provide services over such a large geographic area, but will have to provide other services, such as public transportation, to reduce traffic and congestion on the road. Economically, we can see that population breakdown of a society can impact the funding of schools, city governments, funding for healthcare services, and other public services. In the private sector, we can see that more densely populated areas will have a variety of jobs and economic opportunities, as businesses will be attracted to areas with a larger customer base and larger pool of workers to choose from. But at the same time, people living in a large urban area will also have to compete with more people in the job market, which could make it more difficult for people to get a specific job. However, at the same time, these areas will often have more goods and services for people to purchase compared to communities that have a low population density and are dispersed. People living in large urban areas will also see higher costs of living with the price of homes, goods, and taxes often being higher compared to areas with smaller population density. Whereas rural settlements often have a lower cost of living, but at the same time also have less goods and services for residents to use. The cost of living also impacts the social structures of a society as well. Large, densely populated urban areas often see people having fewer children due to people focusing more on their careers and due to the cost of raising a family. While rural areas that have a lower population density or are more dispersed, especially rural areas that are focused focused around agriculture, often see an average family size that's larger, since children can help out around the farm and the cost of living is cheaper. Traditionally, cultures in larger urban areas focus more on individual accomplishments, with a focus on an individual's career and a large institution. Whereas cultures in more rural areas tend to focus on more traditional family values, religious institutions, and have more of a community feel. Now notice that I said traditionally. When we're talking about different places, we can make observations about certain trends in an area, but it does not mean that every person, family, or culture will fit those trends. We can also look at the age ranges of a society to see what services and opportunities they may need. For example, populations with more people in their 20s and 30s will be more interested in different nightlife options, whereas a society with an elderly population will need to look for a new workforce and provide more healthcare services for their retiring population. Now, individuals living in a smaller settlement or a dispersed settlement will often have to travel far for public and private services. Whereas individuals in a densely populated area will not have to travel as far for the service, but may lack green spaces as their environment resembles more of a concrete jungle. Which brings us to our last category, which is the environment. Societies that are densely populated may lose important green spaces and replace it with streets and buildings. While areas with a population that's dispersed are more likely to have large green spaces and undisturbed land. Urban areas that continue to grow horizontally often end up paving 
taking over arable land, green spaces, and merging with suburbs and other settlements. This is known as urban sprawl, a concept we'll talk more about in Unit 6. Speaking of environmental consequences, we need to also address a society's caring capacity. The caring capacity is the amount of people that can be supported by the environment without damaging the environment. If a society exceeds their caring capacity, we will start to see desertification, depletion of nutrients in the soil, and overpopulation occur, which means we'll no longer be able to meet the wants and needs of the current population. Societies that get close to exceeding their caring capacity may start to see starvation, loss of life, and possibly an increase in refugees from that society, which will impact the surrounding countries and regions. So we can see that depending on the size, distribution, density, and the demographic breakdown of a society, we will experience a variety of different political, economic, social, and environmental challenges or opportunities. All right, now comes the time to practice. Answer the questions on the screen, and when you're done, check your answers in the comment section down below. And if you found value in this video, consider subscribing and checking out my ultimate review packet for more help with your AP Human Geography class. As always, I'm Mr. Sin. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time online.